legendary Bob's Red Mill. We're gonna make some wheat flour today. I'll show you how. All right, so we're just starting out the process. Yeah, we are in the very noisy grain cleaning room. That's the first step in our bulk grain to get clean. So it's been undelivered, goes into an unclean green tank, and then it gets pneumatically uh, piped over into this room. Okay. The first step is it goes through a screener, then it goes through this machine, which is called the disc separator, okay. where it's getting out all the really light chaff and yeah. uh, wheat material from the stalk, and then any really heavy thing that maybe came from the field. Got it. Next step is the discoder, and that is not just a clever name. Any stones that might be in the product get removed at that step. Got it. The final step is what's called a gravity table, where it's measuring the density of the grain itself. So good plump grain goes down the middle, light shriveled grain goes down the bottom and into feed. And yep. any, again, anything heavy is going off the top. That's cool. So that's just that whole process of starting out with a really, really good product to start with. Yeah, it's coming straight from the field to here. And so we're, these are the steps to make sure that it's that premium quality wheat berry that's going into the mill. So we're getting all this stuff out of the wheat berries so it's not going into our flour. And at the end, it's just pure wheat berries. Okay, so from there, it goes over to the next machine then? Yep, so the next machine is the bee stoner. We'll go to it right over here. Cool. Okay, so next step is the bee stoner. Yep. And that is where, I mean, stones come off. Yeah. Straight from the field, there's going to be a couple of rocks in there. We don't want those getting into our products, so those are removed here. Nice. Okay. And then the next step? And then the next step is the gravity table. Okay. And then the last step in the grain cleaning process yeah. is the gravity table. Okay. So what that's doing is separating really nice, plump wheat berries. Those are okay. going down the middle in the good stream. Okay. And any of the shriveled, really dry ones are going down the bottom. That's going to go to feed. Okay. And again, anything heavier is going to go off the top. So that nice, clean, plump, high quality grain, that's all clean now and it's gonna go into a clean grain tank until we're ready to mill it. Wow, there's a lot of little steps to go through just to start out with grain. Exactly. So I'll take you over in the mill room next. Let's do it. Okay. All right, so we saw all this really cool clean wheat now. By the way, where's that come from? So our wheat comes from the Pacific Northwest. Primarily it's coming from Eastern Oregon and Washington. We have really long standing strong relationships with our farmers out there that we've been working with for years which really just helps us ensure we know where the product's coming from, it's high quality, and then it's gonna get delivered on time. That's wonderful. Yeah. So what are we doing in here? All right, so this is the mill room. And because you can't see the millstones when they're in action, wanted to show you some here. Cool. So this is the basis of stone milling. This is a stone mill. This is uh, 1,200 millimeters in diameter. Okay. And so the reason why we do stone milling is because it is a cool, slow process. Yeah. Because of that, when you take that whole wheat berry, you're taking the whole thing, the endosperm, the bran, and the germ, there's a lot of nutrients in there. When you stone mill it, it's maintaining that nutrition and the nutritional integrity that the grain itself has. And that's primarily due to the cool process of it. Got it, so you're actually not cooking it through the heat of the grinding process. Exactly. So this is the whole wheat berries, right? Yeah. And so we take these and it will go into a hopper and then it gets milled by the stone mills. It'll travel through these grooves, Okay. but this is also the cutting edge of the stone mill. Okay. And then it comes out and it's flour. That is cool. So that basically just kind of works this way towards the middle and as it's grinding through the process, exactly. and that flour comes out that way. Yep. So we can go over and look at the milling system as a whole. Um, these two, when these stones are installed, they're right on top of each other. Got it. And actually only the bottom mill moves. The top one is stationary. Ah, oh, okay. And then depending on the distance that you have the mills, it's gonna create that granulation. So how grant coarse your flour is. Depending on what product we're running, the distance is going to change as well as the speed. Got it. But it's only changing just a little bit, isn't it? Yep. That's cool. Let's take a look at the process over okay. here. Okay. Let's go right over here. Cool. All right, so what's our process here? Okay, so if you look straight up, 
We've got grain sitting in that top hopper. Okay. It's coming from that pipe straight from the silo, the clean okay. grain silo. Yep. So it's going to go from the main hopper into these dual hoppers. Okay. Just a place to hold the grain before it goes, comes down here. This is a vibratory screener, so yep. another screening process. Got it. You can see the whole grain coming in. It's coming down here. Yep. So you're going through to there. The eye of the stones. Okay. And then your stones are in here, and they're okay. milling. Got it. Okay. So then, so this is a dual system. So Got both it. of these lines, these mills are running. The flower is coming here. Okay. It's getting conveyed up through that pipe where it goes over here to what's called an azo screen. Okay. Another screening another system. Another screening system. Yep. And then it comes down into these totes. And you can see the flower coming out here. Oh, that is cool. So these are called super sacks and they'll, we'll fill them to 2,000 pounds. That's a lot of flour. A lot of flour. All right, so we got a testing process. Yeah, so you know how I was telling you, depending on the distance of the stones, it will impact the granulation size? Yeah. That's what Luis is testing here. Okay. So we do these tests regularly throughout the milling of the flour to ensure that that granulation is staying on spec. Nice. This is called a row tap. So he'll put the sample in the top. That has three screens in there. He turns it on. And it shakes it, so depending on the granulation, you'll have a certain weight at each level of the screen. So now Luis is going to, so you can see how there's different levels. So that's the flour in the pan, and he's going to weigh it. Okay, okay, it's good. All right. There we go, that's cool. Yep. So we can really test. Yeah, we, uh, those records as our quality records and so if we ever had a question we could go back and see how it panned out you are not kidding you have some high tech it's a little bit different than the mill room absolutely this is cool so what do we got going on okay so that whole wheat flour that we were milling yep. in the mill room there's a toad of it right here mm -hmm. and so we hang it this is the beginning of the packaging right. line so there are two hoppers to feed this one line okay. there's a main fill and then a topper fill. Okay. And we'll talk about that when we get it over to the actual bagging. Okay. So the totes are hung. Those are 2,000 pound totes. A lot of flour. We will run through one of them in about 10 minutes. Wow. <laughs> so it's a high speed line. Yeah. So the totes go over a sifter, so another screener. Yep. Goes into the hopper. Then they go up this auger to a really big screener. So again, okay. A final screening process, mm -hmm. and then it goes into the surge hopper, and the surge hopper is what feeds the bags. Got it. That's cool. Let's go over and take a look at that. I'm okay. fascinated. Yeah. So this line will fill four bags at a time. Okay. Um, and so we've got the main fill, like I said, and then a topper fill. Okay. Um, going into our bags, these bags are also actually made in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, cool. Just out in Washington. So it's all staying close. Nice. So we fill the bags. Then the bags get sealed. Okay. There's a heat sealer. So it's okay. creating a nice strong seal at the top. We trim off the top, make it nice and clean. Yep. Come over here. It goes through a metal detector. This okay. is our final food safety check. So if there is, we calibrate it to tell the metal detector what to look for. We look okay. for three different kinds of metal in very, very small sizes. Sure. It's pretty standard in the food industry. Absolutely. So the check wear, you see right here, it's telling you exactly how much flour is going into the bag. Got it. So these are five pound flours. So if there's not five pounds, if there's under five pounds, those bags also will get rejected. Got it. One really cool thing about this, though, is that it is feeding in 
information back up to the hopper so we can regulate or to the whole machine so it in, is ensuring that it's filling properly. Oh, cool. So the check layer starts to be under, the machine will make adjustments so that doesn't occur much longer. It doesn't require the operator to make any adjustments. That's awesome. So it's just automatically balancing that whole thing out and making sure that it's right every single time going up. Yep, exactly. All right, looks like we're getting stuff ready to ship out the door in a yep, box. We're getting close. So a lot of flour goes through this line. This is our only flour line, okay. um, but it runs at 40 bags per minute. Wow. So it goes pretty fast. Uh, so we've got the case erector behind you where we're putting the bags into boxes. It gets sealed up. Then it will go over to the robot palletizer. Talk about high tech. Right. This was actually the first robot that we installed in, in the building, and now we have six of them. Oh, that's cool. So then it'll stack that pallet for us, and then that will get shrink wrapped and put on a truck. Wow, Megan, this is incredible. I just love how you guys have that old world with the stone mill and the new technology putting everything together. And of course, now it goes out the door. How many cases do you guys crank out of this place a day? So in a day, you know, you just saw one small piece of what we do. This building that we're in is 325,000 square feet. Wow. And we do a lot, we do over 200 products. So in one day, we will manufacture over 100,000 cases. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a lot. Now, of course, people are gonna go, where do I find this stuff? You know, we distribute uh, internationally. So mm -hmm. you can find our product nationally, online, we even have a whole grain store just a few miles down the street here in Milwaukee, Oregon. So it's all very close here. That is great. And of course, you guys have a great website for people to find more. Yep. And also recipes. You know, some people are kind of intimidated with whole grain baking. Mm -hmm. We've got a ton of good resources on our website about that. That is great. And what's that website? Bob'sRedMill.com. Thanks for having us today. This is amazing. And I just love how this is made right in the Northwest.